Hey guys, welcome back to another low level learning tutorial. Uh, today we're gonna be talking about shared object libraries in C. By the end of this video, you'll know what a shared library is, why do people use shared libraries, and at the end, you should know how to make one yourself. Uh, before I forget, if you haven't already, please hit the like button, hit subscribe, I put out videos every week. Uh, learn something new and keep your mind fresh by going into a new low level learning topic. Um, so we're gonna start out with what is a shared object, right? A shared object or a shared library, those terms are interchangeable, uh, or a .so file in Linux is an ELF file that contains pre-written code for your program to use. Uh, the most common library you've probably already heard of and used, maybe without knowing it, is libc. Uh, libc is a library that contains the code that provides the basic functionality in the Linux POSIX programming environment, right? You need libc to do pretty much anything on Linux. Um, so a good example to explain shared objects would be to look at this uh, hello world code we've written. So the programmer, me, um, uses the printf function, but doesn't have to write the code for printf or even define it. I, I don't say anywhere int printf, right? It's just, it's just there. Where does printf come from? Well, what's actually happening is under the hood, your code makes use of libc. Uh, libc makes available to the programmer, or when you're talking about libraries, it's called exporting it exports the printf function so that you can use it in your code. Um, without using the libc library, you would not be able to use printf because you don't have the instructions in your code to execute the printf function, right? So when you compile this code, the compiler at link, which means when it looks for libraries, attaches libc to your program, right? And we'll explain a little more in depth when we get to programming a library, how that works. Um, the next question becomes why, why do it this way, right? Why would you want to make a shared object that sounds pretty complicated? Well, there's actually a couple of really good reasons why people over time have evolved and use shared libraries at large, right? So step one, or I guess problem one that we're, we're solving is disk space preservation, right? So let's say in the previous example uh, for printf, every time you wanted to use printf functionality, like you're trying to print something to the screen, instead of using a library like libc, you wrote printf into your program manually. You defined a program called printf, you wrote the code, and each time you wanted to print something to the screen, you had to rewrite that function. Well, when you compile your program, each time that you would compile it and write that code to disk, you would have another copy on disk of the printf function. Over time, as you wrote more and more programs, every program that had printf in it would balloon you know, the, the use space on your disk. Um, so instead, if you write it into a library, the printf function exists in one location and you don't have to, you know, have your, your disk be eaten up by thousands of copies of the same code. Um, and this goes for RAM too, right? So at runtime, if I'm, if I'm running 30 different programs that all make use of printf, um, you know, that code, if I statically compile it, if I don't use a library, will exist 30 different times in RAM which will eat up all my RAM. If I use a library, there's actually functionality in the Linux kernel to allow libraries to use the same RAM for 30 instances of a, of a library. So you're actually preserving RAM uh, in this method. And then finally, uh, ease of maintenance, right? So let's say that in your previous example, you wrote this printf function, you compiled it hard-coded into your program 30 different times, and then you realize that your printf code was inefficient and you wanted to modify it. Um, well, to modify it without a library, you would have to go to your program source code, change the, make the change that you want to make, and then recompile every program separately. Very hard to maintain, very inefficient. As opposed to the library method, where if you wrote it into a library, you would just change the library, recompile it as a library, and then every program would use it, and you'd only have to make one change in one location. So. Those are at a very high level. Uh, the reason why people use shared libraries, it just makes things uh, more efficient, less size, and easier to maintain in the long run. So finally, we're gonna go into how do we make a shared library, right? So to do that, we first need to really talk about how GCC works, right? How we go from source code, so you know this example, to an executable with regard to the link process. Um, so what a lot of people don't know about GCC is actually when you compile your code, you're going through this two-stage process. Um, you're going through first a compilation process, 
Compilation is a process of bringing your C code, your human readable C code, down to assembly or machine code, right? Um, and what it does is the compilation process outputs this intermediate artifact called an object file. And in this case, somewhere that you don't get to see based on my flags, you produce hello world.o. And if you consider this code, right, hello world relies on the printf function. So we are left with this intermediate object that has this little tag on it that says, hey, at some point I'm gonna need printf. And then once all of the object files are created, the GCC invokes the linker and begins the linking process. And what the linker does is it goes through all of the libraries the linker knows about and it looks for a library that exports printf, right? So eventually the linker will locate printf in libc and it says, oh, okay, cool. The intermediate object required printf, libc exports printf, that's a good one for one match. Now I'm going to tell the loader that every time you run hello world, you need to bring up libc, otherwise we won't have all of our symbols resolved, right? And then you eventually get the final uh, executable elf. Cool. So now that we understand at a very high level how linking works with regard to libraries and what we're kind of looking for, we're going to define a spec and we're gonna develop this library called my math. And my math is gonna export two functions, my add and my subtract. Now let's, let's dive right into the code. I've written no code so far. We are starting completely from ground zero. So let's, uh, let's get into it. So let's make our function that is going to invoke this library, right? So we're gonna write main.c and we're gonna include standard IO and we're going to say that there are two functions my add, which takes int a and int b, and my subtract, oops, subtract int a and int b. And we're gonna say that the function itself says that one plus one equals the result of my add, one plus one, printf, one minus one equals percent D my subtract one, one and return zero. Obviously this is a very contrived example, right? Like if you wanted to do this, you would just use the add and subtract operations. But what I'm trying to convey is the idea that you can expose functionality in a library. So let's compile this. And what's gonna happen is we're actually gonna get an error because the compiler, or the linker rather, um, doesn't know where my add and my subtract are. And we can actually look at the, the compilation output of this. So we're gonna output the main intermediate object and there's no errors there, right? And we can see with nm on main.o that main.o relies on a few symbols. So there's a symbol main in the text section as its own symbol, but there's also three unresolved symbols that we don't know where they live. Printf, like we talked about in the example, will come from libc, but it doesn't know where this my add and my subtract are, right? Because we haven't produced it yet. Um, so we need to write that library. So we're gonna make a new directory, call it my math. That's gonna be our library. And uh, we're gonna write it. So we'll call it vim my math.c. We don't really need to include standard IO here, but we're going to anyway. Um, and let's, de let's define our function. So the function we talked about was my add, which takes int a and int b, and it returns a plus b, and then my subtract int a int b, and it returns a minus b. Great. Now, how do we go from the C to a shared object that other programs can, can use, right? Uh, it's actually really easy, just a few GCC flags. So we say GCC, TAC O, and we have to call this, there's a, there's a spec for libraries where they have to start with lib. So it's TAC O lib my math, and they have to end in .so. If you don't do both of those things, the linker won't know how to search for your library. Um, so we have to look, output it as that name. Um, we have to say f pick, which means you make the code position independent, right? So it can be loaded anywhere in RAM at runtime. Um, tack shared, so it's a shared object. 
uh, and then finally the code we want to compile, so mymath.c. Great, so we've produced uh, lib mymath.so, and we can look at it, and it is a 64-bit shared object, rather. Um, we can do the same thing, we can mm nm on it, and we will see that it exports these two symbols. It exports my add and my subtract. Great, so now we need to use this library against the compilation of our main program, right? So let's move this back a directory. Cool, so we've been given this library, right? We need to write some code. Uh, yeah, we need to write some code that uses the MyMath library. We've already done that. It's in main, so we are going to use the my add and my subtract functions from this library. And the way we do that is with a couple extra GCC flags. And just to make things easy, um, I'm going to rename, because I don't, I don't trust the underscore, I'm going to move lib my math.so to lib my math.so, right? So we did that. Um, lib my math.so, great. Um, so to do the compilation process, we have to do a few things. The first one is to run the compilation. So we need to produce um, compile main.c and output our main.o intermediate object, right? That's step one. Step two, we need to link main.o against our library. So that is done by doing GCC tack o. This is going to be our output program. Um, we're going to t produce it from main.o. We need to link it against the library mmath. Remember I said before the lib at the front and the .so at the back are assumed. So you just say you want to link against m, uh, my math or mmath. Um, and then finally, you need to tell the, comp the linker where to find this library and we say that by saying it's in the current directory so we say the we could say dot too that should also work great so now we've produced main um, and we can look at main and look at the, the dynamic symbols and we can see that main is a program that depends on my add and my subtract and we could do ldd on main and you can see that it's looking for the library mymath.so and libc6.so6. Um, you'll see right here, we actually, the, the loader right now doesn't know where to look for libmymath. Um, so if you actually try to run the program, you're gonna get this error that says, uh, error while loading shared, ob shared libraries, libmymath.so, cannot open the shared object, no such file or directory. And the reason that is, is because the uh, ld library path is not set and by default it's user lib user share lib user lib share um, so we need to specify as an environment variable to our program that ld library path equals here and then run the program and what that's going to do is that's going to enable the loader to look in this directory first for all required libraries it will encounter this library and then we can run our program Sorry, no, no dollar sign there. Great, see, so what have we done, right? It ran our program, it used our library functions, and it said that one plus one equals two, one minus one equals zero, math. So what is the takeaway here, right? We are able to very easily and very rapidly um, write code in a way that is more RAM efficient, more disk efficient, and in the long run will be easier to maintain and make our projects uh, less spaghetti code like if you enjoyed this video please drop a like hit subscribe i drop a new video every week and uh keep on learning have a good one bye bye